just once I'd like to come on here and give you some good news. Talk about wonderful things, say that the sun is shining and all the troubles of the world have disappeared. You might have to tune in to The English Couple, my other YouTube channel, for a little lighter relief. But this time I want to talk about something that uh, one of my uh, friendly YouTube channel people who I watch and have developed a nice friendship with, Jeff Buys Cars, alerted me to. A, a couple of my viewers have also mentioned this and I thought I, there's so much to uncover in so many different areas I pushed it to one side. And this is the idea of the C40 cities. We've heard of the 15 minute cities and the 15 minute towns in which the government and the councils want to restrict your movements, prevent you from going across from one zone to another in your cars um, by say a hundred times in a year. We see the tests are going on in Oxford and Canterbury and other places. But the C40 cities is even more, <sighs> worrying. Uh, it's run really, it's an organisation that has at the head of it a series uh, or a membership of mayors. Mayors, you know, the mayor of a town. They're all part of this giant club, I think across the world. And we have one in this country, in the UK, a number of mayors whose sole job it is to reduce the carbon footprint of their town or city. Sounds very laudable, doesn't it? But of course, it's all gone into this myth about how drastic and catastrophic climate change is going to be for us. The idea is that we reduce the CO2 within the town by a certain amount by 2030. So here we go again, seven years to flatten the curve. And this time, it looks like they're going to be passing laws and legislation and various incentives for people to, I suppose, change from their heating, of course, we know about that with the gas boilers, to going into heat pumps, uh, relying on electric uh, heating or electric everything, because we have wind and solar, which is so amazingly marvellous. But it, again, it will be restricting our movements but the main aim will be on the motor cars. In fact, the aim of the C40s is to eradicate all cars from all cities altogether, which is extremely worrying. And the reason is, of course, it's going to be for our sustainable future. It's avoiding the catastrophe that's supposed to be coming to the planet and all this nonsense that we've heard dished out time and time again. Now, I know that there are people who possibly are watching this and I've had them contact me and going, but Richard, you're wrong. Climate change is a thing. I readily admit that the climate does change. And when you listen to some of the top scientists, they say that actually, yes, it may warm in the next hundred years by one to one and a half degrees centigrade, which I think when you consider, particularly in England where I live, the temperature can go from first thing in the morning on an average day at three degrees centigrade and it can rise up to something like 18 or 20 degrees centigrade. I'm not sh too sure that over a hundred years the general temperature will have risen by one degree. It just seems extremely stupid that people have gone to the lengths that they're doing to avoid us supposedly burning up. So they want to eradicate all the cars from all the cities using these, the mayors, to bring it through. So in London, I, I think it's Sadiq Khan who is the head of the UK division of mayors and is pushing this forward. In London, they have the ULES uh, restrictions, which is going to restrict people's movements and charge people a hell of a lot of money to use their cars. There has been a big plan and I was alerted to this by one of my viewers in the market town, the ancient market town, I should say, in Shropshire of Shrewsbury or Shrewsbury, depending on how you wish to pronounce it. Now, I know Shrewsbury uh, very well. I had a girlfriend up there for a long time and I was continually going up the M40 in England, uh, past Birmingham into the West Midlands where Shrewsbury is. And um, I know the town, it's a beautiful town with some of these wonderful 
Tudor houses, you know, the timber framed houses, absolutely gorgeous, and Georgian properties. It's a remarkable town because it was built in the horseshoe shape, within the horseshoe shape of the River Severn. And you can't really build any more within that. It's developed. It has a castle. It has its park. They have the, the racing on the river. Um, it's a very beautiful and picturesque town full of tourists, of course, in the season. And it's a, a market town. They still have plenty of shops, lots of uh, aspiration, lots of exciting things. There's the Shrewsbury School, uh, Darwin originally lived there. It's got lots of historic connections to it. But the big town plan for Shrewsbury is to eradicate all the roads within the horseshoe shape of the main ancient town, which is riddled with little passages and roads and here's and there's. And yes, OK, during the um, rush hour, it can get a little bit um, busy, but nothing compared to what rush hour is down in the south in Sussex, where I am, or indeed, of course, in Surrey and London and all the satellite counties around it. It's, it's a very peaceful and um, somewhat laid back town is Shrewsbury. But they want to eradicate all the roads. There'll be park and ride drop off points and it's going to have the roads turned, pulled up and planted with trees and flowers and, and be very sustainable. It, it sounds like a mecca, doesn't it? And I'm sure it will be very beautiful. Except that, of course, if you happen to live outside Shrewsbury uh, and a lot of Shrewsbury and, and the surrounding area made up of little villages and people come in and they park up um, and there is already places to park outside the village, the, the, the town, um, and you can do your shopping. There's lots of bespoke small businesses in there. There's a few big businesses and supermarkets and what have you. But if you cannot get vehicle access, if you run a business, what's going to happen? What's going to happen to your customers if you, you buy something that's heavy and bulky that you cannot carry? Or if you're frail and infirm and you can't quite get to one side of the town to the other and you might have taken a taxi? It seems to me that what the aim really is, is about e eradicating all the businesses inside the town and turning everything into flats because people will not be able to carry out their business. And what you then effectively have done is ghettoized people within the perimeter. And the only way out is on a, a public service. And again, you're limiting people's um, ability to travel and enjoy themselves. And this seems to be, to me, what's going on or what's planned for the rest of the country, this sort of thing get rid of all motorised vehicles whatsoever. Now that would be fine if people had voted for it, if people in Shrewsbury and these other C40 towns had said, do you know what, that will be great, we love it, it's a great idea. And if the majority of people, say, I don't know, 75% were in favour, you could see that there would be some legitimacy in this. But like all these things that we're being thrust down, the digital IDs, the central bank digital currency, the uh, net zero agenda, they're just coming down without any of the public having any, a, any idea on the whole that it's happening and not a, t a chance to consult them and have them to vote or give their input or their ideas to perhaps somewhat change what they're saying. It's all being rammed down to us and nobody, it seems, has got one hope of changing any of it. And so it is obviously about time that people started to realise that this was happening and do something about it. This is, of course, our country. We have the right, surely, to be able to have influence on the places that we want to live. Do we want to be ghettoized? Do we want central governments and the mayors telling us exactly how to live? Because they're following an agenda that they think is good for, her, for us. Who gives them the right to tell us how we should live our lives as living men and women on this planet, on our island? It seems to me that there's one rule for them as these people will be still jetting about in their private jets and not uh, a different rule for us. I'd be interested in your comments. If you'd like to find out more, I've left the link 
to Jeff Buys Cars, in which he explores the C40 cities in far greater detail than I can here. It, but it just seems another abhorrent thing that is being, we're being bullied into accepting whether we like it or not.